One of the most common accusations levied against Christianity today is that it is antithetical to scientific advancement and societal cohesion. Had it not been for the hole left by the Christian Dark Ages, they say, we could be exploring the galaxy by now. And while this chart is, ironically, very unscientific itself, they do have a point. The downfall of Western civilization did occur while Christianity was the cultural leader of the Western world. Of course, history tends to be a bit more complicated than handmade charts like this can grasp, and there might be another side of the story worth sharing. This is Catholicism in Focus. <laughs> To start off, let's make one thing clear. This chart is a joke. When we look at it closely, we see that it claims to be graphing scientific advancement, a vague term with no clear definition. Are we talking about new inventions? Scientific literacy among the general population? We have no idea, because the graph is missing a scale, a pretty important part of charting things. Besides this, it's clear that there was no attempt to actually chart data, as each section is merely a straight line, irrespective of the fact that there were good and bad centuries for scientific advancement even without Christianity. And of course, there's this whole mess going on down here. Why are some categories nations and others time periods? Why are other major empires like the Persian, Byzantine, or Ottoman left out? It marks the years 400 to 1400 as the Christian Dark Ages, even though the Dark Ages generally refers to the years 500 to 1000, and Christianity was the cultural leader of the Western world from 325 until the French Revolution. So, yeah, it's a joke. But really, no intelligent person actually takes a chart like this seriously. Clearly, it's not an attempt to mathematically graph actual data. It's a work that represents an ideology, namely that there is a general trend of advancement before and after Christianity, but a decline during, showing that Christianity is an adversary to scientific progress. It is that idea, an idea that leads people to believe in charts like this and make demotivational memes that we must address. Here are a few ways that we can do that. The first is to point out that the economic and societal issues of the time had a far greater impact on the lack of scientific advancement than Christianity ever did. When we look to how Western civilization began to crumble in this time period, the most significant factor has nothing to do with Christianity and everything to do with the downfall of Rome in 476. Whereas previous empires had fallen at the hands of new, rising empires, one that maintains and built upon the achievements of their predecessors, this was not the case with Rome. Sacked not by a new Greece or Persia, Rome was weakened and ultimately fell at the hands of various individual tribes, none of which were able to maintain the infrastructure that had existed before. Without well-maintained and protected roads, and in a society constantly at war, trade declined, the economy began to shrink, and fewer resources were allotted to scientific and cultural advancements. To make matters worse, Europe experienced frequent famines and plagues over the next millennia, resulting in the deaths of millions of people and halting the growth that it had once experienced. Christianity had nothing to do with any of these conditions. Of course, another problem with the narrative that Christianity caused the Dark Ages is the fact that Christianity existed in places that were thriving. While the West certainly experienced a downfall in society due to the fall of Rome, the East maintained its dominance in the world and continued to thrive under Orthodox Christianity. For more than 1,100 years, over the exact period this chart claims was a dark age of Christianity, the Byzantine Empire continued to build upon the ancient Greek traditions of math and science. It was during this time period, led by Christians, that the world saw advancements in mathematics, physics, medicine, and warfare, all of which contributed directly to the eventual Renaissance in the West and the dawn of modern science. For one example, we can look to John Philoponus, also known as John the Grammarian. A Christian theologian of the 6th century, he was the first to propose the theory of impetus, and his work is cited frequently in Galileo's own writings, who identified him as a major inspiration. So, there were other factors that caused a downfall, and the downfall wasn't experienced everywhere. With these two points alone, the prevailing narrative seems almost entirely debunked. But how about one more? Even under and because of Christianity in the West, society saw plenty of scientific advancements. While most of us take it as unquestionable fact that the Middle Ages were a time in history filled with misery and despair, scholars today recognize that this is more of a concoction of Enlightenment thinkers than actual fact. Just like the myth that ancient people believed that the world was flat or that medieval people bathed only once a year, the very idea of the Dark Ages is the work of modern bias. The fact of the matter is that the so-called Dark Ages weren't all that dark. 
Although nothing like the height of the Roman Empire, given the circumstances, this time period actually saw significant advancements in science, technology, and culture. In fact, in terms of agriculture, the early Middle Ages was a sort of renaissance for the Western world. In the wake of the fall of Rome, society saw innovations in the use of heavy plows, horse collars, horseshoes, crop rotation methods, and water mills, marking it as quite a revolutionary time. As society began to stabilize and produce a surplus, other forms of advancement followed. By the late Middle Ages, the Christian-dominated society had produced the mechanical clock, eyeglasses, the printing press, flying buttresses, mirrored glass, stern-mounted rudders on large ships, central heating through underfloor channels, oil paintings, compound cranks, and the theories of accelerated motion and the rotation of the Earth, to name just a few. How did all of these things develop in a world racked by famine, plague, constant war, and little to no infrastructure, you ask? Great question. While Rome had fallen and no major nation stepped in to fill the void, the church began to serve as the primary and in many cases only source of advancement in society. When political leaders fled Rome and the city was left in chaos, it was the Pope who stepped in, providing from the church's resources to care for the structures of the city. It was also the work of the church that founded the world's first hospital in the 6th century and continued to maintain medical assistance, even to lepers and those suffering from the plague, throughout the Middle Ages. When all of the ancient schools closed and no public money was allotted for the advancement of art, literature, science, or mathematics, it was the monks who founded libraries, preserving much of the Greek and Roman philosophy that exists today, and opened cathedral schools for learning. By the late Middle Ages, the church began founding the world's first universities. And lest we continue to believe the myth that the church hindered scientific study in this time, we must also remember that at these universities where priests studied, science and mathematics were a part of the normal curriculum. Cathedrals of the day doubled as observatories, and the smartest and most important theologians of the time all talked about the importance of observing the world for the sake of faith. It's for this reason that the Jesuits ultimately published thousands of scientific papers prior to the Enlightenment, why the father of genetics, Gregor Mendel, was an Augustinian friar, and why the Big Bang Theory came not from a church-hating atheist, but a Catholic priest. Truly, the Catholic Church was the only institution in the Middle Ages substantially funding scientific research. So, is there some truth to this graph? In a very unscientific way, maybe. For a part of the world where Christianity existed, the overall quality of living did decline and scientific advancement slowed to some extent. But to say that Christianity was the root cause of this decline, and that had Christianity not existed, there would have been no Dark Ages and we'd be exploring the galaxy today, is just ridiculous. While some want to continue to perpetuate the Enlightenment idea that the Church is antithetical to scientific study, history just doesn't support it. In fact, one could actually argue the opposite. Had it not been for the Church preserving the discoveries of the past and continuing to fund the study of the physical world, art, education, medicine, and general infrastructure, all in the midst of a complete economic collapse, the modern scientific revolution may never have happened.